Hi, this is Mike Kennedy, I'm 005 Kennedy. I've got with me my original ham radio. I bought this uh, 15 years ago for 50 bucks at a yard sale in Gorham, got me into ham radio. It's a Yaesu FT470, it's a dual band uh, transceiver. It broadcasts on the 2 meter band and the uh, 70 centimeter band or what they call 440 sometimes, 2 meter and 440. It covers a greater range than the hand bands, which is nice, because right now, if I turn the volume up, you will hear the weather. Tonight, low pressure will move northeast along the front today into tonight, then pull to the front just east of the waters Thursday. Weak high pressure will build. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to demonstrate the present, the, uh, property of resonance, okay? Uh, let me show you another HT that I have. Radio Shack uh, HTX202. And I got this for 10 bucks at a ham radio sale. It works fine. But what I'm going to show you is the antenna. This is the famous antenna that they call a rubber ducky. And why do they call it that? It's coated in rubber and it bends. Okay, so that's standard equipment that you find on most HTs, and that's this one's tuned to the two meter band. Okay, well, likewise, this one is, but there's something different about this one. This one has a loading coil and it extends. And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do it on a hand band because it's going to be easier with this radio to show you the weather band, but if you if you look below the uh, 162.55, which is a frequency the weather band is on, you'll see this little jumping uh, display below it. That's actually the signal strength. And what we're going to do is uh, put out more antenna. And as we do that, we're going to bring it to the resonant length for this frequency or close to it. And you're going to see the signal change. Now hold on and I'm going to extend this antenna out. And now we're going to look, we can barely see that little bleep happening on that line below that kind of greenish line. Now, if you look at the signal strength, you'll see it's like, it's three or four times higher, I would say. And it's all happened because we've extended the antenna. Now, while it is true that a bigger antenna captures more signal, the primary effect we have here is that now the antenna is resonating near the frequency that we're trying to capture. And let's talk about that for a minute. What does it mean to resonate? Sound waves and radio waves are very similar. And I'm going to use that for an example uh, because I think people are more familiar with sound. And if I had a tuning fork, which was middle C, and then I had five other tuning forks that were different notes, and one of them was middle C, say one of them was F, one of them was G, whatever. If I hit that middle C and brought it near those other tuning forks and felt each one, what I'd find was the middle C was would also be picking up that vibration and would actually be vibrating to some extent because it's tuned the same. In other words, the physical and construction of the tuning forks are that if each one of them you strike, they're going to generate the same note. Well, if you strike one and it's close enough to the other one, it's going to make that one vibrate way more than the other tuning forks. Well, it's the same idea with uh, antennas. You can make an antenna that resonates, has the correct electrical length to capture a certain frequency. Now we can do this in, in kind of, well there's multiple ways to do it, but the most common way is by changing the length or by using a loading coil. And what's a loading coil? A loading coil is generally a bunch of antenna that's compacted together. So in other words, we can make the antenna longer than it looks because we've put it in a coil. And so 
that's one of the principles that I was talking about in the previous uh, video about the book talking about you want an antenna that resonates resonates in other words antenna that resonates on the right frequency with well, this one uh, this will work for 2 meters and 440 if that's ideal now if I want to use it for two, for 2 meters at its most ideal setting I extend all but this one segment and I put this one segment back in and now this this length with this coil added is more uh, resonantly tuned for 2 meters and I'll get a much better signal with this than I would with a with a small rubber duck antenna because uh, this is closer to uh, the ideal length and so not only is it gonna receive signals better in other words those two meter signals are going to come in this is going to capture it better but it's also going to be able to broadcast them better because this antenna matches the frequency that this is putting out it's going to actually put more power out for other people to receive so that's uh, the concept of resonance and it also includes the concept of impedance which is a little more complicated but let's just say that you want the impedance of the of the antenna to match the impedance of the transmitter and uh, there are devices to do that uh, antenna tuners uh, antenna analyzers SWR meters and we'll talk about uh, impedance at another time but right now we're talking about resonance and usually you can assume that if you buy an antenna that fits an HT you have to buy it for the correct pan in other words uh, you can get these rubber ducks that are tuned for 800 megahertz well if I put that on a 2 meter antenna uh, HT it's not going to work good at all it will work some but it won't work ideally so uh, if you buy an antenna that's made for the band that the radio uh, the HT puts out uh, you can pretty well assume it's the right impedance because otherwise there'd be no point in them making it and selling it so normally things have a 50 ohm impedance but uh, that with HT's is kind of all taken care of for you now when you construct your own antennas make your own antennas uh, or buy specialty antennas sometimes the impedances don't match especially if you're trying to do the uh, more than one band on the same antenna some have overlapping resonant spots and that's why when this antennas collapse like this I can do fairly efficiently both 440 and 2 meter because they they're multiples of each other so they resonate at the same frequency so this is where a lot of hams start out. I would encourage you to get a ham radio license. Uh, the technician one that gives you the access to the two meters, which is what where all the repeaters are, where you can talk locally. Uh, some repeaters go into the internet and you can go talk outside in a, a repeater in Israel or Russia or different places. Uh, 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 the, the technician's license gives you the, uh, the ability to do that and uh, to tell you what I did for the technician's license I bought a Gordon West book I studied for a month went in and took the test memorized some numbers and things and I got all but one question right uh, for the general license I went up a license so I could get the high frequencies these are the more of the uh, very high frequencies and ultra high frequency privileges with the technicians but the HF privileges let you communicate around the world so then you need a general's license I actually went to a class because my local ham club was offering it and I went to this class each week and then I uh, learned the material and passed the test I think I probably could have studied on my own again but the classes are really good because you get to ask questions and sometimes there'll be at least with me there will be certain concepts that don't make sense sometimes I have to ask the question different ways to get into my little brain so the classes are really good and uh, uh, that's one of the function of ham radio groups to give lessons so people get more people can get licensed so there you go we've discussed the concept of a resonant antenna and I've also shown you two uh, inexpensive older much older uh, HTs are hand transceivers 
it's funny they have a new one now that's less than fifty dollars it comes from Hong Kong but it's a bear to program you almost need like a computer to program it these bigger glomier ones one of the first things you see on them is there's lots of buttons <laughs> you can key things in directly there's not as many hidden menus some of the newer HTs uh, uh, the menuing system and learning how to program them is quite complex. The nice things about these is if you buy something like one of these used, this is the Radio Shack HTX202 and then I mentioned the Yaesu FT470. The manuals are on the internet so you pick one up without a manual, you download the manual, you get all the information you need to learn how to program them and they're not that hard to do. So there we go. Resonance and antenna has to do with having a, the correct electrical length to capture a signal or to broadcast it efficiently. Have a good day.